You're listening to the Create What You Speak podcast, where I invite you to come along with me as we shape our own reality together. My intention is to bring out the magic in you. Now let's get started. Run away from the humdrum. We'll go to a place that is safe from greed, anger, and boredom. We'll dance and sing till sundown, at peace with abandon. We'll sleep when the morning comes, and we'll rise by the sound of the bird song. My name is Sloane Fremont, and today I'm going to talk to you about deciding how to show up. Yeah, I'm going to take my horse to the old town road. I'm going to ride till I can't no more. I'm going to take my horse to the old town road. I'm going to ride. Hi, and welcome to the Create What You Speak podcast. My name is Sloan Fremont, and I'm the host of the show. This week, we're going to be talking about deciding how to show up. And what I mean by that is deciding how to show up energetically. I'm also going to tell you an amazing cat rescue story and how to follow your intuition, even when it doesn't make sense. And I have a story for you about how fascia blasting saved my foot. And if you don't know what fascia blasting is, don't worry, I will explain it today. So deciding how to show up, that is our theme for the month of, what month are we in? August. So yeah, that's where we're at. So stick with me. We've got a lot of great stuff to cover this week and I'm excited to talk about it. All right. So just a reminder, a new episode of the Create What You Speak podcast goes live every Monday. Make sure to subscribe in your favorite podcast player so you don't miss an episode. And you can visit my website, sloanfremont.com. You can also email me, sloanfremont at gmail.com if you have any questions or you'd like to talk about anything from the show. And I would also love it if you would leave a review on your favorite podcast player because that helps others find the show. All right, so let me start out today by telling you about this cat rescue story that I was involved in and how initially it really made no sense, but I followed my intuition and there was an amazing result at the end. So... I think I was on a, yeah, I was on Facebook. There was a pet rescue group or something. You know, somebody shared a, a a missing pet. And it was at the local animal control here in Nashville. And by the picture, I could tell the cat did not look well. The eyes were kind of rolled weird. And the, you know, the little bit of information about her was that she was only like five pounds. And I thought she was, you know, older, like 12 or so. So I reached out to them, out to the city to find out about her because I, I just wanted to help her. Right? I wanted to get her out of there. I know older cats are often hard to adopt. And um, I just felt like, you know, I could do something to help. So I called up there and they said, you know, no, this cat's no longer here anymore. And I said, okay. They said she was moved to a rescue. I said, okay, can you give me the information? And they're like, no, we can't do that. And I was like, what? What do you mean you can't do that? And they're like, no, you have to fill out this paperwork, which is, it was called something, but essentially it was like a Freedom of Information Act type document. Not that detailed, of course, but similar to that. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, are you kidding me? Like, you can't just give me the name? And we went through this whole thing and I was super annoyed. And by that point I was pissed and I was like, fuck it. I'm not, this is, this is too fucking stupid. That's like my, <laughs> my motto lately when something annoys me, I'm like, it's too fucking stupid. And so I... I sat there for a minute and then I was like, no, you know what? I'm going to fill this out. I'm going to find this out about this, this poor little cat. So I filled out the paperwork. They send me back, you know, the information and I get the, the name of the place, the, um, the rescue that she's at. And so I reach out to the lady about this. And at this point, I'm still feeling kind of like, why am I doing this? Like this cat's okay. You know, she's at a rescue. Like, you know, that was my main goal, just getting her out of the city pound or, you know, for lack of better words. So, but I still felt compelled to reach out to this woman. So I did. And she's, she told me that the cat wasn't in great shape. She was older. Um, she was at the vet still and they weren't sure if she was going to make it. And so I was like, okay. I said, but if you know, if you need help with fostering later, just let me know. And she said, okay. And she had done a couple of posts on the website for the rescue group. And so I, then I kind of left it at that, you know, and then I think it was later that night, I happened to be scrolling through Facebook and on another lost pet group, someone posted a picture of a lost cat. They're like, this cat has been missing for two months. I, you know, she was older. I don't know if she's still alive. And I started looking. I was like, man, that looks just like that cat that I had called about, right? That was at the other rescue. And so I posted in the group on the ladies, you know, on the comment on the ladies post. And I said, do you think this is the cat? And we, we went through this whole thing. 
Long story short, I ended up giving the lady the name of the rescue. She was in touch with them. And it was this woman's cat. Like she was able to reunite with this cat after two months. She's like, oh my God. She's like, I can't believe this. I thought, you know, I thought that that she was dead. And, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm like, just kind of like almost laughing to myself because it was, this was a perfect lesson of following your intuition on something that made no sense because I was, I wasn't really planning to adopt another cat. I wasn't, you know, I was pissed I had to fill out the stupid paperwork. I was like, why couldn't you just simply give me the name? And so I was going through all these things that they weren't really making sense, but something was saying to me, reach out and find out more about this. And then I did. And I was able to connect this woman with her cat. And it was just, it was a, amazing story and I loved it. And uh, I think, like I said, it's, it's a lesson in following your intuition, but also in, you know, not giving up hope, right? Like there was a reason I was guided to do that. Right. And this, it, it's just an amazing thing. So I thought that was a good story to share with you this week. Ooh, okay. So the next story I wanted to tell you, and then we'll get into our topic of deciding how to show up is I want to talk to you about fascia blasting. And if you're, I, this was something that's totally new to me. Only about a week or so have I learned about this, but I saw an ad on, um, Facebook, I think for some, it was something like that. Anyway, I started researching this and I was, I was watching the, the tutorials and the videos, videos on this. And I was, um, you know, I was, started to, I was like, okay, this is something I don't know that much about. And I, so I'm reading all this, watching the tutorials. And I started thinking, I was watching on one of the things that was talking about the fascia lines, how they run through your body, right? On the the front of your body, over on the sides, through the back, like up to your head, down the tops of your feet. And I was looking at this and I was like, man, I wonder if this would help my foot. Because I think I've talked about it on this show, but for years I've had this problem with my second toe where it's like, up kind of like a claw and it doesn't go flat. And so it's caused a lot of pain. Like when I was dancing, when I was in that dance competition, like I spent so much money on shoes and like inserts and, you know, all this stuff to try to correct it. And nothing worked, like nothing was working. I went to the doctor about it and he basically said, you know, stop doing barefoot workouts like bar and yoga and, or you're going to have to have surgery. And I was like, well, fuck, I guess this is just the way, you know, I don't know. I don't know why this is like this, but here it is. And so again, another long story short, I ordered the product. I got it. I, I r- ran it over my foot, over the top of my foot in between my toes, like the way in between the different joints on your toes. You guys, I'm not kidding. After one use of that thing, my toe, I bent my toes. It popped. I started feeling tingling in my toe. Like my toe was waking up and I was like, I stepped down. I was like, Oh my God, I'm not pushing off the top of my toe anymore. Like so I've, I've been doing it ever since pretty much every day. It's been, I don't know, maybe a week now that I've been doing this. Every time I do it, my foot gets better every single time. It's been like, it's one of those crazy things where I was like, oh my God, like this works, like this actually works. So I'll link to it in the show notes if you want to learn more about it. But it was, it was, it provided so much relief for me that it was one of those things that I'm like, this is like, I have, I'm pretty much telling everybody about it. So I wanted to tell you too. All right. So those are all for my stories this week. So let's get into our topic this week of deciding how to show up. So that's our theme this month is just deciding how you want to show up energetically. And I chose this as the theme because it's something that I really needed a reminder of myself. I I found myself going in and out and going, I could feel like backwards, like energetically, like when I would wake up in the morning, I could, you know, I used to have my routine that I would do, you know, I would journal, I would write, my things that I wanted, how I wanted the day to go, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I had, you know, I'd been getting out of that routine. I had been, um, you know, picking up my phone and consuming too much information, you know, first thing in the morning. And I start that just, it wasn't working anymore for me, right? Like I was, go, it, I felt like I was going backwards and I had to, I needed to take note of this. Like I needed to bring myself to my own attention about this because, um, you know, doing this and consuming all this news and, you know, everything that's going on around me, I was, I was getting sucked in. I was getting sucked into the fake news and I was checking it, you know, not only when I woke up in the morning, but then throughout the day. And then it was becoming so energetically draining for me. Like it was like, I was going through the spell of it or something. Like I was in a trance or something. I couldn't stop consuming it. Like the more I consumed, the more I wanted of it. And it felt terrible. I felt terrible. I felt like shit. Like I said, it was energetically draining. 
I almost felt like paralyzed. Like I was just circling this drain and I, I, I just couldn't like get out of it. And last weekend, I think it was, yeah, I wasted two full days doing nothing, just like staring at my phone and checking fake news and social media. And I, you know, I'm having all these internal responses to it too, like going through like the anger and the rage and the sad, sadness and the hopelessness and just like overwhelm and it, blah, like when are things going to get better, right? Like when are things going to feel normal again? And so this didn't feel good, obviously, like I said, and it, it, it not only was it draining, but it was effect it, like affecting everything I was doing. Like I, I didn't have any energy and I was, it, it, it needed to stop. Like I was at the point where I was like, this has to stop. And, you know, maybe you're feeling this way too, right? Like we, we've been going through so many phases with all of this stuff, right? Of, you know, when at least everybody I've talked to have, I, I imagine, you know, most of you listening are doing the same where, you know, sometimes you feel on top of the world and sometimes you feel like six feet under, right? And it could all be in the span of 10 minutes, but, you know, things are just still different. They're just still different. And I just, I was, I had to call, I had this had to stop for me. And that's why I wanted to talk about that this week in case you're going through this too, because my goal is to help us both, all of us, get out of this spiral of, of circling the drain. Like that's the best way I can describe it because it was like this, this need to consume information again, 24 seven and which only made me feel powerless, right? Because I know I couldn't, there's nothing I can do to control it except turn it off, right? That was my, that was my power. I was taking my power back, was turning it off. And so I wanted to talk about that in this, in the relationship to deciding how to show up, because when I was doing that, I wasn't showing up in a good energetic space, right? I was showing up drained and distracted and, you know, all these different emotions. And I was energetic, I was energetically showing up poorly. Like it was not a good way to show up. And, and what I mean by show up is, is how I'm showing up energetically, what energy I'm bringing forward and, you know, that energy that I bring is what I'm going to act from. And so it's, you know, it's all the thoughts that you think and about anything, right? A particular topic and everything in general. And, you know, it's that deciding how to show up your energy that you bring is it's your general vibe about things, right? Anything and everything that, that you think about is you're showing up to that in some way energetically. And you may be showing up differently based on the topic, right? Like maybe there's some things that are, you know, you show up with fear and anxiety in maybe relationships or money or, you know, your job or whatever, but then you could show up in other areas of your life with complete ease and confidence, right? So same thing, you could show up to a relationship, your job or money, you know, in ease or confidence. So I think if we're, you know, if we're constantly on guard and consuming all this fake news and social media and, you know, this is happening all day, every day, we're, we leave absolutely nothing else for ourselves because we've drained our energy and our energy is so tied up in our emotional response to things and what we're seeing. And, you know, often we, we can't, it, it leaves us with that feeling of hopelessness because we can't do anything about it, right? All we do is consume, 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 but there's no solution. There's no, okay, this is how it's going to get better. Or this is the end game, right? There's none of that. It's just constant problem, problem, plop, problem. And when we do that, we're draining our energy and we have nothing left for ourselves. So, you know, like I said, circling the drain or like we got picked up in a tornado and we're just spinning in it, right? We can't seem to get out of it. And we may want to, but for some reason that pulls us into this autopilot that just keeps us spinning in the same place. And that's at least how I felt. Like I was just spinning in the same place and I wasn't getting anywhere. And so I wanted to talk about how we show up maybe differently, like decide, because that's key, the decision, deciding to show up differently and showing up more with purpose, right? Showing up more with intentional energy, like energy that we want to bring, not just a default energy based on, you know, that's left over after we've done things that aren't really that, you know, aren't, they don't really make us feel that good. And so I'm going to talk through some, just some ideas some thoughts I had, and th there's no right or perfect way to do this, right? What I'm going to do is just, as usual, just give you some ideas and, you know, take what works and leave the rest, but find something that feels good. If you're going through this, find a different way to show up, find, you know, something that gets you out of that tornado or that spinning the drain. So you're not 
wasting time and energy on things that just are not worth it. So here's some thoughts that I had on this. So, you know, just like anything we talk about on the show, we have to be aware enough of our actions. We have to be aware that we're even doing this kind of stuff, right? And that we're not getting the results we want because of it, right? So, so the awareness is what leads to, I think for me, at least always has the decision to change it. If I don't like it and I'm aware of it, then I can decide to change it. And, you know, in this case, decide that I'm going to show up differently. Like, and without the decision though, we're just going to float around in confusion and ambiguity and and remain in that dissatisfaction. So if there's an area of your life you want to show up differently in, right? Like maybe it's money or your career or relationship or health or whatever it is. Think about that as I'm talking through some of this and, and think about, you know, think about how you're doing it now and maybe what that what we're going to talk about how you might be able to do that differently. So let me give you an example that will maybe help you relate to this better. So let's talk about how we show up to money. And what I mean by that is when you think about money, like what comes to mind? Like how does your body feel about money? When you talk about money, are you always talking about it being bad, the root of all evil, or there's never enough? Or, you know, when you think about money, are you scared? Is there fear? Like, you know, what, what, how do you show up on the topic of money? And, you know, money is just energy, just like everything else. And this is one way that I think really helps you to see, dig into those beliefs you have about it, if you're willing to look at it and explore it. So, you know, when I, again, when I'm talking about money and and how you're like thinking about how you're showing up to it, like, how does it feel to you when you think about money? How does it feel? So, if you're, if you don't like how you're showing up, if you feel like you're showing up in this space of lack or the space of, you know, like fear about it, or there's never enough. Okay. There's your indication that there's, you know, there's some room for improvement there, right? You can change that. So the next thing to look at is, you know, thinking about that, like maybe, and maybe this is writing it out for you, right? Like maybe you can just write some thoughts out about this, or if you like to journal or whatever, but you know, if you're, if you're anxious about it and you're like clinging to it or you're negative about it, you know, finding that loop of what it is, is going to help you to understand what it is that you need to change. Right. So if we're t- again, money, the lack mentality, there's never enough. Um, you know, if that's what it is for you, then, you know, there's, there's definitely ways to improve that. So we talk about not believing everything we think a lot on this show, right? Like that's one of the things I talk about quite a bit. And I think especially as it relates to money, our thoughts and feelings about money can feel so ingrained that we just take them as truth, right? We can just assume that I never have enough money or I never will have enough money or money is the root of all, you know, whatever it is. But I really would encourage you to pay attention to this and and really think about is, are my thoughts about money true? Like, is this an absolute truth or is this just an old outdated belief that I've been, you know, putting on repeat and letting play, right? Because you can change that. You can, we talk about that all the time. You can change that default player. And one way to do that, especially when it comes to money, and this is the third part of this, is to think about that future version of yourself that has what you want. Like, think about the you with money. Think about the you who doesn't worry about money. Think about what that might be like. And I think this is where it can get fun because you can decide however you want this to go, right? You can, you can think about the version of you that has, has the money that you want, like, and just start imagining how, how do you act when you have this money? Like, how do you dress? Like, what do you think about? Like, what do you, what, how do you show up? How do you start your day? Like, how do you, if you go make a purchase, how does that feel? You pull out the credit card or the cash. How does that feel? And, you know, you'll start to see what you're doing currently and what you, how how that future version of you would do are probably not the same thing. So you can start focusing more on that future, on that emotional feeling that the future version of you would do. And when I, when I'm talking about this, you know, it's, it's not necessarily about the stuff. It's not necessarily about the house or the car or the bank account or whatever, but you know, it can be to some extent because that might be what gets you excited. And that's what, that's good. That's a good thing, right? But it really is about 
giving yourself permission to step into that version of you, like step into that body, like imagine yourself in stepping out of who you are and into the body of the person who has the money, I'll just use that as the, you know, loosely money has, is, is, you know, financially stable, you know, however you want to word it, but what is that version of you that shows up with that already having that, right? Like, how does she feel? How does she show up? Like, what does she think? And so here's some examples of the way you might do that. Like you may show up thinking and knowing that abundance is always around you, right? Like just knowing that you have abundance, like trusting you're always provided for and you have maybe this ease about you, right? Like you're not, there's no stress. There's no freaking out about money. It's just there. It's just always there. You don't have to worry about it. You're always taken care of. And you have this like, you embody confidence and sureness about it. Like there's no, oh my God, is it, am I going to have enough? Like, is it going to be there? Is it, you know, it's not that at all. It's this calmness, this ease about it. Like even walking tall with your shoulders back because you believe the truth of that, right? Like you believe in your own truth and just believing that you're limitless, right? That you, you can have enough money and there's more where that came from and there's no limits for you when it comes to that. And so when you start to do that, you start showing up differently energetically, you're deciding to show up differently. You're taking a different approach. You're not just on autopilot of, oh, I wake up and it's the same thing every day. No, no. You, you get to have the choice to start acting as if you already have it today. Like you don't have to wait until you have the money or the relationship or the career or whatever it is. You, you just, all you have to do is start thinking that this is how it's going to be. Like this is how it's going to go. And I did this in my own life. I mean, I've done this with money. I've done this with my relationship with my boyfriend. I've done this with jobs. I've done this with my house. I just stepped into the version of the person that already had it. And I lined up with it and I let it come to me, right? Like I didn't, I I think a lot of times what we do is we, well, first people think they have to wait for the thing, whatever the thing is to to be happy. And that's simply not true because you're always going to be waiting then if you're never happy. But I think we have this like, you know, this randomness about things, or we expect things to be random where, you know, things are kind of all over the place and we bounce from one thing to the other, to the other. And sometimes it's good. And sometimes it's not, but when we make that decision to show up differently and we start to come from this like energy of confidence, and this is how this is for me. Like, this is how this is for me. Now you start to see that you walk a more of a straight path and things come to you rather than you having to go to them. Right? Like, you, you, you line up with it. I, I, that's, that's the best way I can describe it is you make the decision to show up differently and things start lining up for you, with you, to you, they come to you. It's almost like it almost becomes laughable because it's so easy when you do it that way. And I, I can say that because I've done it. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's not as hard, I think, as we want to make it out to be. And it's possible. Anyone and everyone can do it. And, Another great way to do this, and I've done this before myself, is to do a future st- a future self meditation. That's one where you you basically th- there's variations of it. And you can search on YouTube or on any meditation app, and you're probably going to find it because it's a common thing. But it's just called a future self meditation, and you you step into that future version of yourself. You imagine it, and if you start doing that time and time again, the universe has no choice but to give it to you because you're lining up with it energetically. And that's why the myth you're having the miss today, why it's, you're not getting what you want because the energy isn't lined up. So I know that can feel like a lot. I know that can feel like, Oh yeah, right. She doesn't know my situation. She doesn't know, you know, what's happening And you're right. I don't, but that, that doesn't mean you can't do it. I I've pulled myself out of impossible situations using this method and tons of other people have done it too. If you read anything about the law of attraction, that's pretty much what everybody does that gets what they want. So they become an energetic match and you can do it too. This quote, when I think about this topic, one of the things I like, or this quote, I just like it when I, when I think about this is it's from Yogi Berra. And he says, when you come to a fork in the road, just take it, just take it. I mean, especially with this, meaning just do it. Just try something. Just try something. Try it for an hour once a week, try it for 10 minutes, once a day, right? Just try it. What have you got to lose? Right. Whereas we, we, we spend so much time arguing for our limitations and biting ourselves and saying we can't have it, but 
Why? When we could just as easily say, yeah, we can, we can have it. I can line up with this. I can believe this about myself, right? Like we can do it. And I think just taking the fork in the road, whatever it is, just trying it, whatever comes to you, whatever feels good, just try it and see what happens. So as you move forward this week, how are you going to decide to show up? right? Like this could be in anything and everything. It could be one area. It could be all areas, but how are you showing up right in fear and negativity from consuming too much information that doesn't really help you in any way anyway, or are you going to choose a different route this week? Are you going to explore some of the other options you might have in showing up to the world that we talked about in the show, right? Like we all have the choice. You can do we any of them, none of them or all of them, right? Like, so, so what decision are you going to make this week? How are you going to show up? How are you going to show up? The choice is yours. So make it a good one. All right. So that's it for this week. Our topic of deciding how to show up. I'll close out the show and talk about the songs I picked. So we talked about deciding how to show up and how you get to decide. You get to pick that. You, you get to change the autopilot if you don't like it. And this can be on any given topic in your life, career, health, relationship, money, finances, family matters, whatever it is for you. If you want to change an area of your life, you first have to change the energy you bring. You have to change your, the energy you bring forth. And in order to do that, you know, the things I've seen in my life that have worked for me is to first be aware enough that I'm showing up in a way that isn't working for me, right? That isn't good. I'm not getting results in some area and, or I don't like the way it makes me feel. And then it's, noticing that, but then making that decision to change it and and thinking about how I'm going to show up, making the effort for myself, right? Like making the effort to decide what energy am I bringing and how do I want to bring that energy? What do I want that to be like, right? Spending some time in that imaginary state of, ah, I could be like this. Wow. You mean I could show up like this every day? Like, yeah, you can, right? And then connecting with that future version of yourself that already has what you want and imagining, picturing how she shows up, how she moves, how she acts, how she feels and thinks. And, and when you're doing that, you're lining up with that version of yourself energetically and you start to change, you change, the world changes around you and things become so much more effortless. And I promise you, you will have a totally different reality in no time. I I did it myself. I've experienced it and you can too. All right. That is it. All right. So I'll talk about song before I do. I want to remind you my course 33 days of magic is live. Uh, just visit 33 days of magic.com. If you want more on what we talked about this week, this, this course is an amazing way to do that. These are the course talks about the exact steps I did to change my life. Um, I give you all the the templates. I give you everything. It's amazing. 33 days of magic.com. All right, songs. Intro song. I just picked some random songs this week. I don't know why. I was struggling a little bit with songs. So intro song is Old Town Road by Lil Nas X. I don't know why. Everybody knows the song. It's a fun song. I just liked it. And then the outro song is Joy by Bastille. Um, You know, I just felt I needed a feel-good song, and this is a good one for me. Um, Joy, When You Call Me. I was giving up. I was giving in. Joy set my mind free. How do you always know when I'm down? I was giving up. Oh, I was giving in, but joy set my mind free. I thought that was a great song to end this week on. So, all right, that's it for this week on our topic of deciding how to show up. I would love to know what you think. You can email me, sloanfremont at gmail.com. My website is sloanfremont.com. You can also find me on social media at sloanfremont. And if you like the podcast, please remember to subscribe, rate, and review. All right, thanks for listening this week. And remember, you get to decide how you want to show up. Oh, joy, when you fall.